residents. Five hundred. 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 Five
Right, on the west side of Minnesota Avenue. Um, the zoning district is the Arc Lily Zoning District, which is a uh, land intensive uh, district. It's got land intensive uses, but with a low traffic and low water flow. So as we mentioned, this is an amendment to an approved conditional use permit from over the summer. So on the left hand side of the screen on kind of the green box there, you can see the approved site plan. Um, what that shows is approximately a 10,000 square foot personal storage building um, access onto Minnesota Lane and then some, um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if that's parking or turnaround space, but some impervious surface on to the right on the right side of the building. So on the right side of your screen is the amendment. This is really the bulk of what you are looking at this evening. So as you can see on the right hand side of the page, um, the building has shifted approximately 140 feet to the south. This is only a snip of the site. The site is much larger. We're very much on the north side of the site. So um, the bulk, the remainder of the land is um, is not shown on the site. But the building's been shifted um, about 140 feet to the south. There's been an addition of 800 800 square foot vestibule over here on the right side of the building. Um, additional impervious surface has been added. That includes um, a wraparound on the west side or on the left side of the building. And you can't really see it in this image, but the driveway location has also uh, been modified. So this image is really just showing um, an overlay. Um, the pink highlighted, excuse me, that's yellow. The yellow highlight is the original approval. That really shows that location of the original driveway access, um, the building, and then it's overlaid on top of what the applicant is proposing uh, this evening. So at the last meeting, those of you who are, that were here, you remember that there was uh, quite a bit of deliberation um, on the board about whether to approve, what kind of conditions, um, and what to add. Um, the board identified really four areas where there were concerns. Um, there was concerns about the addition of that vestibule, that wraparound driveway on the west side of the site, as well as the addition of propane, heat, and well and septic on, on the site. Um, at the end of your last meeting, what uh, what happened was the board asked for a continue or didn't ask the board continued the application um, in order to uh, and ask staff to take a look at the criteria that are required in order to add some conditions that would address the concerns that were identified by the board. So that's what you have in your packet tonight. You've got an alternative set of findings. Um, they are they show up on your packet on the packet page 10. That might be a little different um, than the staff report. But on the package for each and really the change of findings um, are a little bit of an addition to finding number one and finding number three. Um, I'll read these quickly. This is really just a summary of those findings, but this is what you have to do in order to um, add conditions to prohibit the uh, the wraparound driveway, the vestibule, bathrooms, and heat. So I'll read these just really briefly. Um, Finding one, we added the language that says to ensure the proposed conditional use is not injurious, injurious to the use and enjoyment of the other property. The addition of an 800 square foot vestibule, heat and bathroom should not be allowed. And then to finding number three, uh, to prevent erosion to the property in Minnesota Lane, the wraparound driveway on the west side of the building shall be shall be removed. So that was really the two um, additions to the, the findings. Uh, the conditions get a little bit more complicated uh, because you've got a draft set from the planning team where we've, we've crossed out and underlined, um, and then your attorney also provided um, a, a set. So what I suggest tonight is if the board's direction is to um, approve alternative findings that you really go with what your attorney suggested. Not a whole lot different than, um, than what the planning team suggested, uh, but that to say let's forget about the um, alternative conditions and findings of the staff report and go with what your attorney presented it. Um, I've identified, I've, I sent those all out to you at the end of last week. I sent them to the applicant's um, consultant, the applicant. There's also a couple copies here for anybody in the public who might be around. So they are readily available for anybody who is interested in seeing them. Um, so really, the board has two options this evening that I see, at least two um, that I see maybe uh, the direction going. Option A for simplicity is to adopt the October 16th findings and conditions. That is the staff recommendation. Um, you can find that in your packet um, on page 28. So basically verbatim what was presented to you last month. 
Option B is to adopt alternative findings and conditions. Um, we stated earlier on the record that would allow for conditions to remove the vestibule, the wraparound driveway, bathrooms, and heat from the site plan. And again, if that's the direction of the board, um, we're going to go with your attorney's um, findings and, and conditions. Here it's a draft motion. Again, option A and option B. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have. Any questions for Allison? If I mistakenly call you, Allie, and you, Allison, or something, to forgive me. But that's fine. Absolutely. I respond to both. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, so, at the last meeting, for those of you that weren't here, um, we did close the public hearing. Um, so unless we have a specific question we want to ask somebody, I don't know that there's a reason to open the public hearing at this time. Sure. Um, Madam Chair? Yes? Uh, at the end of the last meeting, it was specifically stated that there would be a public hearing, which is why I drove down the building to attend this meeting. So I, I would ask for the right to, to speak and present. Or we're, we're both here because of that representation that there would be a real public hearing. Um, okay, I thought it said we could. It didn't say we would. You no, know, it said that the board will reopen it. Yes. All right, with that, I would like a motion to reopen the public hearing. And will we reopen the public hearing? And I have a motion by Mr. Rucker and a second by Ms. Bird to reopen the public hearing. I will ask three times. Uh, sorry, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay, I will ask three times if anybody would like to speak for or against this application. Why am I not surprised to you here, Jason? You all know who I am by now. <laughs> Jason Campers with Cheek Cube Engineering. The record address is 14070 Highway 52 Southeast, Chatfield, Minnesota 55923. Um, this, first of all, it's kind of a boilerplate statement. All the additions that we're talking about tonight and that you guys will be kind of um, deliberating on and talking on are meeting the Olmstead County and your ordinance, the section 4.02, your condition needs permit, numbers one through eight. Um, there was some kind of open discussion at the last meeting that I didn't really have the notes prepared, but I just like to know regarding stormwater um, specifically on like the west side of the building. Um, I believe the neighbor to the west had some concerns about runoff, both entering potentially entering her property and then also reaching Minnesota Lane to the north. Um, I went through some calculations um, and for both watersheds that drain onto the property, they're both under one acre. Um, and I did some swale calculations that we're providing along the west side of the building to the west of the wraparound. So the, the wraparound is butts right up next to the building, and then it drains to a swale or like a ditch. And then that ditch conveys stormwater both to the north to the culvert and then to the south. So that ditch at its current design geometry, um, and I can go through that if you'd like, has a capacity of about 27 cubic feet per second. And with the contributing watershed to it, it, it's only five cubic feet per second. So it's not even using 25% of the swale capacity. So there's zero issue in regards to engineering standards when it comes to swale capacity conveying stormwater. Um, and also the culverts. I think there's concerns about the culverts and the stage storage and whether or not water would overtop Minnesota Lane and cause erosion on that roadway. Um, as it's designed, we have a 15 inch corrugated metal culvert called out um, with an upstream invert of 1052, downstream invert of 1050, and the cul de sac is at 1054. So there's actually two feet of what we call stage storage between the culvert invert and the top of Minnesota Lane where it over top. And the 100 year that I just mentioned was about five cubic feet per second. Um, and that corresponds to an elevation of 1,053.28, which is 0.72 feet below. Um, and typical engineering standards when we design culverts, we design to a 25-year event. 
Um, this takes this conveys the 100 year event, so there's going to be no issue with stormwater overtopping Minnesota Lake. So that was my question. Thank you. Any questions for Jason? Thank you, Jason. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. My name is Brian Huntington. I'm a shareholder with the law firm of Larkin Hoffman. In the packet, there was a letter from me dated October 24 that hope we all had an opportunity to see. As was mentioned, we're here tonight on an application for an amended conditional use permit. Just as if this were an original conditional use permit application, the criteria stated in your ordinance section 4.02A control the decision. So if the project meets those criteria, approval is mandatory as a matter of law. Staff has recommended uh, findings approving the project in full, and it's significant that here tonight they stand by that original recommendation. And we agree with staff that the project, every element of the project does meet CUP criteria. The decision should not rest upon criteria not found in your ordinance, such as whether it's believed that all elements of the project are strictly necessary. Absent an inconsistency with your legislatively adopted criteria contained within your code, the landowner may incorporate building ordinance, building elements and improvements as the landowner deems desirable. The town has no authority to prohibit elements such as heat and sanitary facilities. These are not prohibited by your code. The project satisfies your CUP criteria and the concerns about improper usage can be accounted for. And in fact, a variety of conditions have accounted for concerns about uh, improper usage of the storage facilities, such as for overnight accommodation. There's no basis to reject the wraparound driveway based upon water runoff concerns. You just heard the extensive modeling of drainage for the project has taken place. The modeling did account for every element of the project that's before you tonight. <laughs> And it reflects that the culvert is more than sufficient to convey water away from the cul de sac. Predicting water runoff is clearly a matter requiring expert analysis. The finding regarding the sufficiency of the drainage have been questioned by any contrary expert. It would be arbitrary and capricious for the town to reject the findings and conclusions of the applicant's expert. I do want to discuss a few specific conditions which have been proposed by staff and which have been proposed by the city attorney's office. Starting with condition number 15. <clears throat> Applicant, its successors and assigns may access the personal storage building located on the property at any time. However, all activities on the property must be contained within the personal storage building to be located on the property between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. There shall be no activities within the parking areas or green spaces on the property between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. I think there's an inherent inconsistency within the condition. You can access the building and be something that you can't drive to the building. That's the way I read it. After all, this is a storage facility. Uh, I'm not sure what's meant by that time prohibition. I believe that time prohibition is unnecessary. You already have a different condition there about uh, prohibition on occupancy. I think that's more than sufficient. An arbitrary window is, is simply not necessary to effectuate the intent of prohibiting this for use as a residency. There is a difference between the original staff findings and the city attorney recommended findings. Um, condition number 23. Excuse me, I assume you're talking township attorney. Yes, sorry, township attorney. 23 in the original staff conditions um, has dropped from the Township attorney submissions. We agree that submission sh should drop. Um, the, Which one? Because the numbers on our original findings were off by one. So okay. Applicant shall provide access to the property at all reasonable times to the township or its representatives. 
for purpose of inspection to ensure compliance with the terms of this amended conditional use permit. So the property and operations shall be available for inspection by the authorized township inspectors, then business working hours upon reasonable advance notice to the applicant. Uh, that condition is not appropriate. There are no there are no permitted uses in this zoning district. Every use is by conditional use permit. You cannot condition properties development based upon the landowner's waiver of their right to exclude people from their premises. And after all, usually to go on the property, you need probable cause and a warrant. Uh, I've never seen it before where there is such a, a wide open invitation for members of the government to access the property. Likewise, in the original conditional use permit conditions, now these are included also in the township attorney conditions. There is a provision in there which purports to require indemnification of the landowner, uh, again, just for developing one's land. And I would submit that is an unenforceable condition. Again, I've never seen it before in any other jurisdiction. But after all, we're here on a conditional use permit. We meet the findings of the ordinance. We're entitled to that permit. And uh, I don't think that provision would stand up in court. Um, so for all these reasons, I would ask that the um, that this board recommend approval based upon staff's original findings with modifications made to the specific conditions of approval that I've just discussed. Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't I didn't remember your name. Yes, Brian Huntington. Any questions for Mr. Huntington? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak for or against this application? Last call. Anybody like to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move the public hearing. Second. And a motion by Mr. Rucker and second by Mr. Albrecht to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair will sign motions, please. Okay. Um, so, so I spent a significant amount of time, went through all the information we have on this. I listened to all the previous public hearings. And um, and my personal opinion, um, and I'm working up just FYI, I'm working off the findings that Mr. Ruby sent us, our attorney's findings. Those are the ones I, I'm looking at. And I, I did compare them to what the um, staff put together, and they are very, very similar. Um, but after, after reading through all the information and listening to the previous public hearings, um, the primary, one of the primary, probably 50% of the conversation was on the drive. Um, and then, um, uh, and then of course, uh, the new building location and the drainage and all, and all of that. And after reviewing all of that, I have come to the conclusion, this is my conclusion, on um, these, the draft alternative findings for Mr. Ruby. Um, I, um, I'm going to skip to the conditions. Um, condition number one talks about 800 square foot of each. Um, and if you recall from one of the previous meetings, there's a section of the county ordinance that through administratively, there, there was a, a mistake and that never got included on our council. And we cannot be less restrictive using you know, the county. The county says that an auxiliary building cannot be more than 10,000 square feet. The 800 foot addition puts it over 10,000. So in my view, 
um, that uh, Mr. Ruby wrote up. It says the applicant shall resubmit a site plan and bringing plan without the under square foot. And, and I'm okay with that because then we are now being less restrictive than the county. Um, now, it's possible that the site could be rezoned and then that could be added in, but that would be a, a separate thing down the road. So staff missed that when they had their staff finding? Originally, because in our, in our township ordinance, mm -hmm. the section, it's section D, it's missing from each one of the, the zones. That section D isn't in any of them. And at some point, and, and Christy made the comment during the meeting that somehow that got dropped and didn't get when we moved over, didn't get copied over to our sure. And so in ours, it looks like there is no. I'm sorry, I just want to put a clarification on that. We did look um, quite extensively at um, what happened between, um, you know, the Orinoco uh, zoning ordinance um, in the Olmsted County. Um, there's no indication there was a mistake or an error made on behalf of the planning department. It looks like it, it could have been. I'm not saying it's not, but there's no, nothing that indicates either way if it was a mistake or if there was actually um, a reason for it. And there are a couple other instances, at least one comes to mind, where um, where Orinoco is a little bit different than than the township. Uh, excuse me, than the um than the, the county of our yeah. river corridor. The it? River corridor. It's also also about feedlots. I know there's going to be a conversation about feedlots later on. So there are a couple examples where Orinoco is a little bit different than Oakside County. So I always ask that we don't call it an error on behalf of uh, the the planning department. It's been left out. We can correct it if that's the direction um, the board wants to go. Right. So but, it's just a place that but somehow if it was in the county. And we took the counties and made changes on feedlots and river corridor. I'm not sure why, mm -hmm. how that got dropped. It, it, it's yeah. a matter, it's not for this this issue. Thank you. But, um, so anyway, um, but the county still states our total is no more than 10,000 square feet. Without a CUP or without rezoning? Without, without rezoning. Okay. Um, um, so, so I'm, I'm okay with that one. Two and three are, are pretty basic. Back to one. So, the last sentence says, talking about the community management shall not be allowed. And yes. number one, yeah. I would say that um, needs to be struck. On the conditions? Alternative well, findings. Alternative well, findings. Which one are you on? Or it says to achieve the proposed conditional use is not injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood and will not significantly diminish or impair values of such property. The addition of an 800 square foot vessel. Those are findings. I'm, I'm on the condition. Yeah. Oh, we're all so we've got enough here. Let's see where, where is that? The draft up there. All right. It's right after the findings in Bob's. Okay. Sorry. It, you know, yeah, skip, right. skip the okay. Okay. So they're pretty pretty much the one is number two and number three are, are pretty basic. Um number four the, the driveway. So um we have to have to remember that the driveway is actually not the purview of this commission. Driveway permits are issued by the town of Um, But um, because of the overhead door that was installed on the north end of the building to make it easier to get in and out, I don't see the necessity for the wraparound drive. However, that it's not our decision. That will be a town board decision. Well, but the the wraparound isn't. That's not a the driveway issue is from the township road onto the property. Right. Once you get onto the property, that's no longer that's no longer the township's responsibility. Correct. Right. You're only talking the right of way part. We're just talking the right of way. So the, the wraparound is part of the CUP because the township shouldn't have any any say as to. I shouldn't say any say, but they don't have any responsibility after the road right away. Then it's on private property. 
Okay. Um, but the um, but the in the here he has written the applicant may leave on the property and do not install. Yep. Right. Yep. And I think we should change that to shall be. And looking ahead to if this property is ever split or whatever, um, we don't want that removed. So I think what number was that one? Number four. That's still on number four. Yeah, it's the second to the last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, number five, the applicant shall receive a new approved driveway permit for the new location. Um, I think number six and number seven should be stricken after looking at the previous public hearing, both of those on the preliminary mm -hmm. and we did not have anything specific on um, Number eight. All um, all grading plans, sites plans, permit and such to be updated based on the new location, the building, and the um, and the driveway. Um, everything else, I think, is also um, um, I know the gentleman earlier said that he's never seen these before. Um, our township attorney said that told me that these are normally included in, in everything that he does. It was just the two of them that he mentioned about that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so really, my 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 changes were the were the um, the addition and the um, striking six and seven, and then and the change in made to shell. And 14. Yeah, 14. Yeah. 23 to 5, that's 14. Yeah. 14. The hours. Mm -hmm. oh. And the reason that was put in there was so that there weren't any outdoor gatherings. That would, because this is a storage unit, mm -hmm. so it's not. We're having fun. Well, it's not for having parties, but you'll also be in there putting things away. Obviously, we know that it, it's, it's staying outside. Yeah. Anything else, it, it should be contained within the property, within the building, between those. Well, between something them. else, if, if we're allowing the, you know, the propane, so like we're on number 14, cold storage building. Yeah, that that needs to change. Yeah. George. What's that? Yeah. Well, she didn't call it the cold storage building anymore. And and that that's fine. We can start that. Well, should we can we just get rid of the last sentence? It's a little redundant and we're not specifying anything about people driving in the parking lot or whatever, backing their stuff up, but it still means these things have to happen within the building itself. Which implies they cannot happen in the green space. And get rid of maybe some of that lack of clarity that happens. Yeah, but do we also want to allow things going in and out? You know, two in the morning. No, I think the hours are fine. We have hours of operation for all sorts of stuff, and yeah, I just think we don't need the last sentence. I see what you're saying because it says that all activities shall be inside the property or inside the building from 9 a.m. to 7 a.m. So that's like 9 p.m. redundant. Did I say a.m.? Yes. Thank you. There, there have been a, a lot of Bones of contention in this application. Um, you know, I went I went through at our last meeting the number of times uh, yeah, that well, it was known by the missteps. And um, and after, like I said, after reading through all the material and listening to the previous 
eight hours of public hearing, something like that. Um, I, I think in in my mind, I think this becomes a a, a win-win for both parties. The applicant is getting pretty much what he is asking for. Um, and so that's where I'm at. Um, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time going through this and then, you know, it makes your head spin. But, but I tried to try to sort through it and, and lay out what I, I felt was the right thing to do. So, so our zoning way ordinance doesn't say anything about the Arctic Lily being having to be under a thousand feet, correct? Ten thousand. Ten thousand feet. Okay. But we can't be less restrictive than the county, so the county stays ten thousand. So we yeah. we can't be less. So it's got to be ten thousand. We could be more restrictive. I mean, right? Yes, we can. Yeah. So then what, what I'm trying to just wrap my head around right now is, you know, I'm looking at the original findings and recommendations. Staff recommended approval, even though it is over 10,000 square feet in an arc level, correct? But the county says it has to be 10,000 feet or under. Yeah, and so, I mean, that that question, what, what happens there, um, the more or less restrictive piece, that comes up during the drafting of the language. It's not meant to be on a case by case basis. So that should have been caught if, if that truly really is uh, less less restrictive um, during the adoption of that zoning code. It really is not intended to be going back on a case by case. Now that you've identified it, it's identified that there is a distinction that the board either didn't intend or, or no longer wants. Really, the remedy there is uh, to go through a text amendment to put that language back. Into sure. the ordinance, which I agree we need to do, but as always, we operate that we can't be less restrictive than the county. We're not so the county stands. Okay. Um, the county was recommending a move of a larger than ten thousand square foot building. That's what I'm still struggling with. It would be our opinion that because the zoning codes are different, that this does not apply here. That would be the opinion of county staff. Now, I understand that there's been some conversation about which one's more restrictive, but the, pro the problem is that there's other things that are different between the two as well. So it's hard to take just one piece out of it. So since April, we've been operating that we are going to follow the 10,000 because that's what the county says, right? But now the county says what they say doesn't matter. You can just do whatever. I don't know. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I'm trying to understand that. I'm so confused. <laughs> it's, it's. Well. Is Mark here? You know. Okay. So since April, he's been saying our really is 10,000 square feet. But it's not written in our zoning. But it's not in our zoning, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Zoning. It's, it's in the county zoning. Is that correct? That's what we've done. That's, what that's, what we've we've all, done. that's how we've always operated. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And we've always operated. Oh. Okay. And some, for whatever reasons, that didn't get Included in our version, but we're not issuing a third designation. No, 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 it's the other thing, right? Just one, two, three, okay. Um, so we have a problem with taking out 57 or let's talk about the wraparound driveway. Get that, that one so the wraparound driveway to me doesn't that's not a huge sticker point for me anybody that's ever driven anything big knows it takes a lot of room to turn that stuff around if you can pull in the worst thing a guy can do is when you're backing up 
that's how you're not paying attention. You know, so if you're backing out out of any of the doors, or if you're having to back around the corner so he can get himself turned around to go back up the driveway, whether he's backing a boat, backing an RV, backing his motorhome up, that's how accidents happen. If well, you can back out the door and got, pull around. But here's the thing, parking that he's got a lot more space on the east side of the building. I, I tell you this, in my opinion, like looking at this now, if you don't want him trying to get situated in the cul-de-sac, putting his their headlights into the neighbor's yard, they can drive straight in, come around like they're heading back out and then back into that big building. That's what I think. I was, if Mark were here, I'd ask him, that would be safer. That's probably what he's trying to do and accomplish without getting backed up and then backing all the way into that building. No. So he can come in, go around, get facing back out, and then back into that overhead door that he put can on. You, can you go up there? And this is my what I think he's doing. Point. Yeah. I think that he's instead of trying to maneuver and get himself in a backing, you know, going up into her driveway and then trying to back in, he's going to drive up, drive in his driveway, come around, get facing here, and then back in, so that he's not trying to come in here. He would have to come this way, and then he's gonna hop, he's gonna be trying to get back inside here. That's what if he were here, I'd ask him. Or if he backs out of that north overhead door, he's got to back down to the driveway, then go to the east side and get turned around. Or this way, he can just swing right around. Yeah. I, under, I understand what he's trying to do. I think that's what he's trying to do. That way, he's not doing it in that cul-de-sac, which is gonna cause headache for neighbors or whatever. And or he's gonna back into somebody coming home. He's not gonna see him. It would be safer to do what he's proposing with that driveway. For that one door. Oh, for the, for, any, yeah, any, door. any of them. So they come around and they aren't trying to back in to get into there with this larger stuff. Okay, so show me what happens to those side ones. Like so if it were me and I were driving in the driveway with a boat and a and a SUV, I'm coming forward. Here I'm coming down. I come around like this. I turn, get my front end out. And I back my unit in. Mm -hmm. I come around, I back in. Same thing over here. Otherwise, he's coming in. He's he's forced to try to come down and he gets to here and then he's jimmying to get in and out. So what he's trying to do is come in, back in, come in, back in, and come over. I think. I got a thumbs up. I'm on the right back end. <laughs> Why he's trying to do it. Is to keep him out of the call sack so he's not trying to get yeah. in position yeah. to back into that facility. Yeah. Anytime you're trying to maneuver big yeah. things, it's just it takes a lot of space. Yeah. And based on the fact that driveway is in a different location and the building's in a different location, that's why we didn't see that on the first plan. So once the building the shifted, space. Driveway, yeah. 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 No. See, and yeah, because there was after listening to the previous public hearings, there was no talk no. originally about it. And he was talking about a, a much wider area. Looks to me here, yes. then and right the here. Building so shifted, the building shift and it gives them, it keeps them out of the road trying to get positioned in my opinion. So anything? What number is that one? Number four. I think that'll help keep what he's trying to do from happening in the circle position. I would probably strike that, let him come in, get off, and 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 get situated where he's not trying to do it out in the circle. So you're saying resubmit a site plan, grading plan. You're talking about striking that sentence do we have no, no, no like, num number four applicant okay. built and struck one property or so property. resubmit a graded plan and strike out without the rear reference right yeah and the sentence immediately well they, they just talked about basically the storm water and how that's going to be with the wraparound yeah which and makes it, sense and i asked got yeah, it understood the the drain thing, and we talked about that last month too. So, 
So you're saying on number four, that second sentence without the rear wraparound. Actually identified in two different space, different area yeah. here before. So I recommend that you remove both. Don't so I think the report just said I would think you take it out. Shall at all times comply with approved site plan and what do you got now? Right. So everything up to applicant shall mm -hmm. comply. Yes. Tammy, is the so number five for the for the board? So number four would say applicants will at all times comply with the approved site and grading plan. And then the applicant shall leave on the property the moon that yeah. installed with the right. Okay. So number five. So there's still not a guideline for which can give me the issue one that was the approved site plan. We did approve that one, but then the other one was planned, and that was not approved. And so my understanding is he wants to get approval for the other approved one now. Okay. This one is more in the cul-de-sac. This one's one. farther in the cul-de-sac, closer to the residents. But all we're going to ask from the town board perspective is that he, you know, come to us with another driveway permit request so that we can look at that. And staff even recommended that we yeah. obtain a new driveway permit. Well, so so my question is: Is getting a new driveway permit a foregone conclusion? <laughs> Not necessarily. I mean, I can't say one way or another what we're going to do next month if he comes next month. Really, it says shall apply for and receive. So, oh, <laughs> well, yeah. he's a, he, he applied for it, I think, on Fridays, but it hasn't been approved. Yeah, I mean, if we did approve it, yeah, I, that would probably change things. Uh, he would just have to, I mean, if you look at the original site plan. You'd have a curve leading yeah. up to his driveway, you know. So we can we can move forward with our part of it. Okay, you don't the, as yeah. they drive want to know how that could be yeah. like if, yeah. if that. I just can't say one way or another with the town board. Yeah, no, no, that. I understand that. I just wasn't sure if anything in here with that wraparound driveway hinged on. Okay. No, because you're once you're into the property, then it's private That's property. Okay. That's as long as you abide by the grading plan. Yep. That's the problem. Um, six and seven, striking them. Um, eight, number eight just talks about making sure that all those plans and permits are current and updated with the new building location and driveway. So mm -hmm. I don't think that's. And then, like I said, I think in number 14, we were going to take off the word cold. I think I said on 13, too. Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere it says cold storage, storage you just building. say storage building. Right? Yeah. And then are we going to strike the last sentence on 14? Yes. Let's go to the again. Yep. However, all activities on the property must be contained within the cold storage building to be reached to be located on the property between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Well, he can do anything they want Why? all day. Oh, it's it's just like that. It's supposed to be inside. inside. It's just got to be inside. It's it's just got, it's got it just has to be inside during those hours. After 9 at night and 7 in the morning, any activities should be inside the building. Oh, he's right, though. The way it reads, it's yeah, you know, it's any activities that ever happens, there has to be happening all the time. Yeah. So it needs to just be reworded somehow. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't read right. It does not read right. It's the thing. You can do everything. You can access. Well, no, but 
since all activities on the property must be contained within the storage building. To be located between the hours of With, 9 p.m. But within the storage building. Is the way I'm reading it, it's, yeah. it's got to be with inside the building. Oh, it's like parties. Yeah. So we should put no outside the building. All activities. I'm not sure what the legal is for that. That's not even a so but my, it's, it's, my it's, question on that one is he pulls in at 11 o'clock at night with the pickup and a boat. Just got home. He can obviously pull into his. Yeah, it's proper. Right. Yeah. So, Can't give you so the, but the way this reads is. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to. That's not, so that well, I'm just I'm just stating that out that the way it reads, he wouldn't be able to enter exit be able the driveway. To access it at any yeah. time, yep. any day, at any time. I don't know how you would write that. So basically, I, I, you can access if, it. if that's the case, I don't think you try to rewrite it. I think you scratch it. Could okay. You could just you it says somewhere else. Yeah. You could you could put in there something about no excessive noise from 9 p.m. to 7. You have a noise ordinance in a township, so it's not necessary to put that in. And if you're breaking a noise ordinance, you're breaking a noise ordinance. Yes. We put that in the condition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We could just potentially strike it all together. We can strike it. Fourteen all together. Watch the next one. Now we have noise and mm -hmm. vibrations. Rereading. Mm -hmm. Re mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing that um, you brought up earlier is um, um, number 21. Applicants will provide access to the property to the township or its representatives. For purposes of inspection. Does that just go with the annual review? Or is that something we don't have? There is one about in here about an annual review. Number 20 is the we will conduct an annual yep. review. May conduct. May conduct. May conduct. May conduct. Yeah. It's not. Not will. May. It's May. No. And my guess is that a review in number 20, a review or um allowing an inspection in 21 would be if we receive a complaint but then that would be the compliance officer correct that would be sent out yeah and it says to the township for its representatives yeah you know, would be the compliance would be so when if so number 20 or 21 the only reason we'd ever have to go out there is if there was complaints right. we wouldn't be the ones who go out. yeah it would be Staff's compliance officer to okay. verify. I think that one could actually. The way it's reading that. You could you could strike the first sentence mm -hmm. if you want, because this next sentence says it's property and operations shall be available for inspections by the authorized township inspectors. There's your yeah. within business hours and advance notice. Yeah. The I could get a hold of that. Yeah. Strike yeah. that too. Can I ask a question about number 20 that we, the township may conduct an annual review to ensure compliance? <laughs> you know why it's there. I know why it's there, but. What I want to know is we have had very little compliance with this to date. So to ensure compliance means what exactly? What happens if compliance isn't occurring? Because so far, nothing has happened. And I'm just going, and I don't know if this is the right vehicle for, I don't know, but I do have this question because another cease and desist letter in route, evidently. Did I see an email about that? No. 
And what was that for? I didn't see the letters. I don't know. What that oh, the um, cease and desist was to stop the work until this amend amend C P was. Okay, and is that because work was continuing even though the the amended C P hadn't been voted on? Right. Yeah. Okay. So. And work work did stop. Yep. Work did stop. I did see that, and I appreciate that. Um. I guess I'm just wondering what 20 actually means. You just need to stand on if we do have to have that. Mm -hmm. Should it change from storage unit to something else? What actions can we take? Uh, that's the compliance. Officer. That's the compliance officer. Well, what happens if well so, if, so if there was a complaint, yeah, and the compliance officer goes out there and figures out what's wrong, then typically our attorney would send a letter saying you have 30 days to bring it into compliance. And then if they don't, then they get another letter saying you have seven days or we will what whatever option is the right option to do. You could revoke the CUP, you could take them to court, you could make them tear down the building, you know whatever the appropriate action was, depending upon the application. That's standard procedure that's not a specific thing to these yeah. applications. So, so when all of these violations were occurring to date and the letters went out the 30, within the 30 days, the initial 30 days to remedy it, they were all remedied within the 30 days? Okay, and so then did a second letter go out? That said, you need you have seven days to remedy this or else. You know, the letter that went out said to cease and desist. But did, it, it didn't. It didn't until this was approved. It didn't say corrective action. So I get. So I'm just trying to understand the whole procedure, even aside from this. Like, um, so even previous letters. So that was the most recent, but there were previous letters that went out as well. Yeah. So was there never any like consequence provided aside from the letter? That would, I think, um, be a question for staff because we did not, our attorney did not issue any letters until the most recent one a month ago or whenever that was. Okay. And um, and we weren't involved in any with any inspections of compliance issues. So what happened um, whenever they went out there, what actions were taken? I, I'm not aware. Of. They may have sent letters, but I wasn't. I don't think any of us were. I think, yeah, I think it when I'm trying to understand. <laughs> generally speaking, yeah, Madam Chair, a good point. And just to kind of build off it, I mean, generally, if we, you know, we get a complaint and all zoning enforcement is done on a complaint basis. So if we get a complaint, we'll send our inspector out there to do an evaluation. Yeah, generally, he'll go out, check out the site. If there isn't, if there is a violation, he'll actually try to knock on the door and see if he can gain voluntary compliance. Uh, generally, it's in a residential home. So try to get voluntary compliance, send a letter out. If you can't get that, this says you have 30 days to cure. Do another follow up inspection. If that happens, usually then there's kind of another letter that says usually it's a week. And then what would happen is that we would refer that to the township attorney for potential legal action at that point. And that would be, you know, that's how this would be enforced is through the township's attorney. You know, could file suit against the person who was in violation. Okay, and so the applicant was always responsive within that thirty days, according to the criteria that you laid out. I'm not sure how that all played out. I'm just kind of generally that's how the process would move forward. I think some of this was confusing, frankly, because of the unique relationship that Olmstead County and Orinoco Township have and differences in because of the zoning ordinance being different and then the enforcement mechanisms are slightly different in the fact that we use the 
township's attorney and not the county attorney staff. And so I think this has been a learning curve for all of us. And I have a page of notes that at some point in the not too distant future, I'd like to talk about as to how as we move forward together, we can kind of think, how do we do this? It's a little easier to understand and makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, I just want to make sure if we have something like 20 in there and compliance isn't happening, that something actually does happen to ensure compliance. But we would not, I mean, generally we would be going out there on a complaint basis. So if it was turned into a junkyard and you said, hey, they're storing junked vehicles out there, that would be the kind of thing that would ask, that would have us open it out. It would not generally be us going out and every year going and having a system in place to go out and review a conditional use permit. So how how does this happen logistically? If we decide we want to conduct an annual review, we and don't. it's complete driven. It's we don't. Yeah. We, we don't. We don't. Okay. Um, it's on a complaint basis. Yeah. Mo most everything is complaint driven. Okay. David mentioned. Um, so the only time I'm aware of that there was an annual review required was it wasn't even in our township. It was um, southeast of Rochester. There was a church that wanted to build a new building. And they had that we put a requirement on them that they had to come back to the county planning commission every year so that we could make sure that they were making some progress because we approved the, the CUP and if you don't if there's no action taken in 12 months period that CUP is no longer active so we required them to come back and we did that like three years and each time they had made some steps forward and then we gave them five years and then that was it. But, okay. but that that's the only time I'm ever aware that there was actually annual reviews conducted. So this is basically saying if we get a complaint, yeah. then we may open the back up and take another look and see, make sure everything's on track. And but we're not like, hey, you know. Okay. No, this is this is personal property. So. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Unless you want to work there. <laughs> no, no. I'm good. Thank you. Though. Any other? So, so did we finish twenty one? I think on twenty one we decided to remove the first sentence and just leave it to property and operations shall be available for inspections by the authorized township inspector, which in our case is, is staff. Yeah, okay. And then just number 24. I just began trying to understand. Um, so, if there is non compliance and they receive written notification about it, then it's not remedied. That should be subject to amended conditional use permit review. Is that the same thing? That's different. This is. Kind of, it's just. It's it's related. It's it's outlining what would happen. Okay. It's just it's just stating stating that if there are violations, that is the basis for the amendment. Conditional use to be okay. revoked. Okay. Basically, it's saying if they go, if they get a letter saying thirty days or seven days, whatever. To do this and they don't at that time and then we have so this says any violation of not remedy the other breach team. Any violation of can you be very specific like not remedied or addressed within the time period specified <laughs> please well it's it says before that says I shall promptly remedy within the time period specified by the township. Whether that's 30 days or, you know, if it's the middle of winter, they might not be able to do something because of the weather. I just don't want to be here every month. <laughs> so 
So just, should we talk about the best of you a little bit? That's kind of the one that hasn't been really addressed in depth. Rather than I'm still hung up on the staff and recommending approval of that in the original. There was no vestibule though in the original. original. There's no there like, well, vestibule. The, the October one. Okay, I was gonna say not, not the okay. of the amended. Okay, yeah. Amended. That speech. just showed up in the amended C O P. The prize. Yeah, that wasn't part of the original. Right. Edition. Because yeah. what are we afraid of with the vestibule? Just it's just flying over the square footage. We should be consistent. Yeah. Sure. That's what well, other that's what well, it is. Well, this is our first Stark Lily. Yeah, so I mean, we really have nothing to say. Well, we did it for this one. I'm just I'm trying to wrap my head around. The fact that planning or staff recommended it because they're they were fine with it. What's our biggest concern other than something that's not even written in our zoning? It's already in the account. Can't be less restricted. Well, if it can't be less restrictive than the county, then how can they recommend it? That's where I am. Same meaning. That's where I'm, you know. But it, yeah, I don't. But what are what is everybody's concerns about the best view other than that? Are you afraid he's going to live in it? Because what, what I would say is, so he's got a storage unit, correct? Where he's going to have all the stuff. For me, an office. Or, you know, that's where his microwave refrigerator would be, bathrooms would be in there. That way you're not taking up your storage area for your personal items, you know, your, your modern day luxuries. I think the only reason that they, what he first said when he first came in May and June, because I started listening to him all over again. You know, was he's going to access it twice a year, spring and fall, to kind of put it in and take it out. You know. I think that might be if I'm speaking for others where their concern must have been in October. I wasn't here. Nor was but, I. So that must be, you know, because now it's just changed again. Yeah. You know, what was different from when the original five months of discussion to October? Yeah. I, I'm it, guessing, it, yeah, it was a miss on, you know, the original plans really sucks because it would have been really nice just to see the whole thing right away. So that that's that's hard to wrap my head around too, but I do know accidents happen. That's why I'm trying to learn about that 10,660 square feet. So, because it, it is outlined in here that it shall not be a residence. Nobody shall live in there in the amended CUP that staff applied and gave us in October. So I, I'm just trying I, to see what everybody else is thinking about. You know, is that what we're afraid of? I don't know. I would I would guess that he probably intended to put that vestibule on there when he ordered the lumber to build the building, if it were my guess. That's right. That's clearly there. It's clearly <laughs> there. I'm, yeah. I'm just I just keep trying to guess what is happening. I think that's where they're they're the concerned. The applicant's mind. Well, I think there's going to be. I don't know. I don't think we should. You know, we should just see what's what's in the application. I mean, I do. I have a question about setting precedent. You know, like if I don't know how many earth will we have. This is it because of the MnDOT reroute, you know, when they redid it in MnDOT. Okay. MnDOT actually put Minnesota Avenue in, constructed it for a frontage road, and created this earth lily zone. That's why MnDOT put in the other driveway because they determined that was going to be the safest on that on the side. That's why MnDOT actually constructed all of the accesses along that road at that time. And how far down does it go? It goes all the way almost to the new septic treatment plant. Almost. It gets tricky down there because it's like county and all that, but you know, that whole Minnesota Avenue, there's a cutoff point where the county takes it over and the state runs it. But that's the only one in our township. Um, I don't know if there's others if they've ever crossed over 10,000 square feet. Well, and it's so this seems like a fairly small crossing over 10,000 square feet, right? Mm -hmm. But if, if you allow that, then could somebody further south of that go in and be like, well, we want 12,000 square feet. They could, you know, like, is it, are we 
It'd be like both degrees of well, and there are what seven buildings on this property. So yeah, the next one will be twelve thousand, and then what you say? And so okay. that that's one of my main concerns is like even if it gets rid of the zoning ordinance after this is done, you know yeah. this this would be grandfathered in obviously, but mm -hmm. then we have it in writing, so we match. But no, like we were supposed to in the first place. An inch but then why would we just do that? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just playing devil's yeah. advocate. No, I, and I, I appreciate that. I'm just trying to just understand it. Yeah, you know, no, I know. You know, no, I'm but just trying to see what everybody else is yeah. thinking as far as where we're headed, you know, towards the end here. It's already there, right? It's the building's been built. Yeah. Okay. And if they say no, they'd have to tear it off. No, no, the best the one. Best no. No. I thought it was there. The opening. The opening is there. It was boarded up. They didn't actually construct that. But so, you know, everything was ordered prior to submitting the amendment to the approval. Yeah, of course. So I don't think anybody's got any problems with it. I think it's just the, the square footage. The square footage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that since April, we've been going on that the county only allows 10,000 in our lily. And that's what we've been saying since April. So this was resubmitted in a public. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're still missing the doors. Oh, oh the, the north. That was not out. It shows you an example of it. I think it is. I got some in each person. Sure. That's what I said. After I started going back yeah. through all of this, let's do some what I was looking for earlier. At least turning yeah. movements. But the turning movement, the way he's put it, or what I said earlier, why he's probably doing it, yeah, it keeps from probably a lot of headlights out of the neighbor's yard. Really? Or whatever. I don't think we have a choice. I guess it's the building that shifts in, the driveway got put in the wrong place. I don't think we have a choice. They can't have that. Because yeah. they lost it in the front side when mm -hmm. they did yeah. when they shifted. Oh, I was just looking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's still still thinking. Yeah. You know, if they're reading an erosion plan, um, do we, you know, upon completion, do we get any confirmation by the engineer that the grading plan is followed? I mean, do we do we do that? Because I mean, I don't know what grading plans processes for the. I don't know. County approved this. Right. Well, you go back so. after because I know it's kind of because the building shifted. We're doing all this. I know the grading should be the same thing. Something like it's done. It's grading plan. After two minutes. Yeah. So then does somebody approve that it was knowledge? That's about my pretty great. Uh, I think I'm not. So when they when GQ did their original stuff back in May, mm -hmm. said here we go yep. and applied for all their permits. I would assume. That when the building shifted and moved, then they apply for their well and septic, and all of that happens again, so that that it complies with their new. Well, new grade. well, it's a new plan. Wait, not nah, because if depending and on that was where they were going to put it the first place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it all depends. Any any application right. needed right. to be renewed. Right. Have to be. I just know well, the septic moved. Right, it was identified True. purple. Yeah, yeah, and, but, and, and they they're showing it on the plan. So have all of the um, permits for the septic well, I've, all that's been approved? I, I didn't look at the website, but you can see it out there. Yeah, there so the well was approved 
the subject design was provided, but they have not applied for the subject permits. There was uh, there was uh, plumbing permits, but those were withdrawn before the last meeting, and they did the resubmit and they agreed with the based off of the best of So they would need. It. Was that approved, or is that part of what we're doing tonight with the grade? Yeah, so we don't approve that until the year. But we reviewed it before we got it. Um, and so if they did do septic design, it would be up to our septic amount to be beyond septic permit to the septic system. So if we pull the best, we do a lot for the F3 Smith grading plans. I'm looking at the originally approved. Um, July. The reason I asked that was the number eight said no work on the property shall continue until all permits have been approved, including grading, conditionally accepting new wells and building permits. Obviously, work has gone ahead, but, but they weren't necessarily sure they were going to do something. Is that you've most recently reviewed? <laughs> yeah, the um. Some of them came in after after the CFP was approved. So the second design was approved before the building permits were submitted before. So they had everything. The subject design was was in so that they could show that they could have a subject design. And we look at that to compare if they need a holding tank or not, because the holding tank is not really allowed. As if you could put a subject Again, and the subject design was reviewed by our team. Okay, so they had their purpose. You're talking whole thing without a septic system, so where it would just be a, a containment system and then gets pumped out. Yeah, correct. But that's yeah, that's that's only if a septic mm -hmm. system. Yep. yep. So just a, a semantics question. So at least that they submitted them and they were reviewed. This condition says that they have to be approved. It was they were approved. Yes. So okay. The building permit was actually approved um, on September 6th. Okay. And the well permit was issued on October 3rd. Okay. I just wanted because I just wanted to make sure that was happening in case we needed to carry this original condition over <laughs> to this. But it sounds like that's all in order. So. You want to turn box? Um, What's that? A lot of them. Any motions? All right. One more time. Good job. Yeah. Cool. All right. Seven twenty. We got a couple hours yet. For everybody in the room, let's just talk this through one more time. We're gonna take out number four. We're gonna take out the first two sentences. You're talking about on the draft alternative on conditions. conditions. So. Wait, gonna... I thought we were leaving applicant shall construct one driveway. Period. No, but it says without rear wraparound. And then cross out the without rear. rear. <laughs> we were in like, out the first two sentences. Yeah, we're retiring. Okay. So number four would read applicant start with applicant shall at all times comply. Applicant shall leave on the property the midnight driveway. No other driveway shall be allowed. So. And we don't need to specify that we are only wanting one driveway because that's all that's allowed anyway. That's all right. Yeah, that's in the Hertz Lily. I don't know if that's in both you and don't have it coming in, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were going by the okay. This is only making sure we're not access. Having but, a door where we have the driveways. But just, just remember that anywhere in these findings where it says cold storage, yeah. the word cold is going to be removed. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. says it number one, it says it number two. It says it a lot. Yeah. All right, number six will go away. Number six, seven will go away. All of number 14 will go away. 21, the first sentence, first sentence goes away. Okay. 
I don't want dynamite in here. So there's two numbers. No, four, 14. 14. There's a 14 is actually on the page after. Well, if you're looking at the copy that the township oh. attorney did. Yeah, then he sent it the twice. Yeah, yeah. so the next board. Yeah, the next board. Second. That's the. I just noticed that it's not Yeah, now it's the, it's the second set in the second set of board. I didn't notice the. I didn't notice the. So you got uh, two twelves, two thirteens, two fourteens. Do we need to remember this? Then uh, in, okay. the, in, the, okay. in the final okay. version of the Nine Fat Alley, I'll okay. pick up. Renumber. Hit my limit because I didn't catch that one at 33. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't even remember what you did. <laughs> All right. That's what I had. Mm -hmm. So we decided everything except for the 10,000. Repeat. But that's a county limit, right? But they say it's not in our ordinance. And our ordinance supersedes the company, even though we don't have anything in the house. And counties supersedes everything. I mean, it's a, if you want to read all of it, you Right. That were at this. In mm -hmm. order for them to get the best of you, you resolve it to what? Best of the mode. Take it out of the air quality. A2. Yeah. Which is what we said to do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get rid of the whole art building corridor through there. Well, we said to change this to A2 back yeah. in April at first because it didn't meet the didn't meet the definition. And because it's hard, we couldn't even figure out what we to use when we won those. Remember, when yeah. we talked about all of the flex stories. Yeah, flex stories. There wasn't one that actually fit this application. Yeah. So. It would have probably been the better route to go. Yeah. I just don't see a, a real big issue with the vestibule. I understand what they're thinking with it. It was, if I were building it, I would want, but I don't know how everybody else came about that. Perhaps it should have been, let's see. Perhaps. But then, to make it legal, we got to rezone. No, no, yeah. no. So are we setting a precedence that, like you said, somebody wants down the road 12,000 square feet? And... But it's case by case basis, though. It's true. I mean, you won't be because we're going to put that section D in all. Yeah, where it, then it is written in the zoning laws. Right. So it's either you're going to follow the arc lily and stop at the 9,880 feet because that was what it was originally submitted, yep. or you decide right now that you're going to make an exception to it and not follow the county rule. So you cannot follow the county's rule down the road, correct? Yeah. Well, so the county has the one that's so. It's not, not. In, I mean, I think we are interpreting that as not applicable because it's a diff, it's it is not a term that would be verbatim with some of the other changes. So a couple of things. One, I believe this is the only Arc Lily parcel yeah. in the township, so yeah. there will probably not happen. But assuming that and then kind of looking at your zoning, you know, that's another conversation that we want to have. I think there's an opportunity for us to kind of take a look at this as we follow us in the fragile eyes and say, what can we do to you know, what are the intentions of some of these things and how can I block as we 
move forward. And I get that part. So, but right now we always fall back on what's counting. So and do we wait and say, well, you can put the vestibule on after it's zoned properly here? So we are, the staff report, the staff opinion is that is not applicable to this application because it is the Orinoco zoning ordinance and not the town zoning ordinance. And that, the, that is our interpretation of that for all of you, is that the two are that because it's not in the township zoning ordinance, it is not applicable. So if this, if they had brought like a 200,000 square foot building, you would say that would be fine to according to your findings based on what you just said. You would not have a finding that would say because just of the size that that was not allowed. Now, it'd have to, if there was some other purpose or some other thing, sure. you know. But the well, size issue. So on the other side of what I'm thinking, you know, by if we do deny it the vestibule, the only real findings that we have to deny it, because it, they're saying that it can be over 10,000 square feet. Do whatever you want. Well, the only findings that we have that are the complaints are just a couple neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's the only findings that. I'm on that and that they weren't complaining about no, the vestibule. No. If we deny it, I'm just wondering, does that open us up to future litigation on it? Because we denied it because we wanted to. Well, we went to it. But I mean, really, our there. reason was we were trying to hold them to the 10,000 like the county. Yeah. yeah. But the county is just not going to know. Right. After we've been doing this since April. Yeah. I know. I know. So, but it's not matter to the judge. It's they'll say our interpretation yeah. could be as big as it you know, wants to be because there's nothing so, in there or you know, it's got to pass it. You got to let the bill occur. I'm trying to avoid that. Right. You know, yeah. 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 We got into well, it. Just... <laughs> well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Then you would strike one from. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so we'll strike one. Of them. Well, applicants shall comply with the approved site planning. I did really say though. Can we put so we can't put any limit on the site? Like we can have an amended CUP next month because it's been added on another five thousand feet. <laughs> I mean, like, is that is that a possibility? Like, absolutely, it's a possibility, right? <laughs> But yeah, so do we need to amend our ordinance like immediately? <laughs> we haven't had time to do anything. Well, I know we haven't had time to, but you see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't think I just say straight that and both of us will. Really... Is it money? So then, if you strike one, then basically you just use staff recommendations. Oh yeah, so we strike one. That's, yeah, that's what we were just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go with the first one the, from October. Staff yeah. recommendations. Yes. Yeah. 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 Your concern of coming That's back and go, oh, by the way, we ordered more. I don't believe that it does. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's on paper. It's on paper. Anything it happens or anything. 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 So then, if you go to <laughs> the October recommendation, yeah. then you would just strike that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we're going to use his draft alternative conditions, taking out what we just talked about. Yes, you're taking out 21. So we just trash investigate. No, you, you drill now. We have the best. You'd have to take out the not exceeding. But yeah, so yeah, exactly. then but we need we need the staff recommendations of the not exceeding the ten thousand six hundred eighty square feet. Right. You change the not exceeding ninety eight eighty square feet to. And um, 10,680. So it did not exceed the 10,600. Yeah. The only thing I, that I saw in staff recommendations was this 23, which we struck out for the same as Bob. By number one, you would have to remove. The third sentence applicant shall resubmit a site plan without the 100 square foot place. So you have to take that. Yeah. Well. So I'm looking at staff recommendation versus Bob's right now. The only thing that I'm that's jumping out of me right now is 23 and 20. So 23 and staff and 21. We struck out the first sentence on Bob's, which is Bob's 21 and staff's 23. Meeting point two in on that. Well, maybe we should add township. I think that's in, in the staffs too, correct? Those were from the previous. Those weren't the previous. So I, I'm talking staffs October. Um, right. Recommendations. Right. And Bob had those in. We got too many copies now. Yeah. Well, it's a condition. So, yeah, right. It was 23 originally a staff condition or? Okay. Um, it was from the attorneys. The attorney. staff, staff said this can be checked to review by the attorneys. So, that is why they're much longer than my original staff recommendations. And you see different language um, as to how. So I was just trying to simplify things instead of having yeah mm -hmm. you no know, right. we're taking this from Bob we're taking this from yeah. staff yeah. the staff has a laid out as to what basically we're approved it right when she gave her presentation said that she recommended we square it off of October the October. The, the draft if, from the lawyer. If you're kind of if you're getting to the point now where you're thinking that you know at the very beginning of the conversation we kind of said there were two different routes you could yeah. go, and the first route was kind of to accept, you know, the staff report from October, which was kind of essentially with approval with a lot of conditions. Yes. And the second one was to kind of say if you wanted to specifically address, I think there was the four areas. I think you've now gotten to the point where you're probably okay with all four of those. So if that's the case, you probably could go back to the October conditions yeah. and approve those. And then that would already be uh, something that would be available for us to down for. Make sure anything about it. I would say now I gotta go back and look at the October ones because I wanna make sure that everything we talked about tonight is covered. Which ones are the Those are on, um, is that page 30? Thank you. Yeah. Of oh, this month's? Yeah, yeah we expect Yep. It's this. Okay. The page still. Page still. She'll find them twice. They're on page 30. Step lines through someone else. Page 30 is much easier. 30 is the page. Yeah, So 
Right. Is that the shell, but the other thing it doesn't say, now we have to add that back in, is it doesn't say that he's required to get a new driver. So that needs to be added back in. Oh, number five. On page five to 30. Applicant may construct one to two in this driveway in the location shown on the TNM. Right. And I don't see. Plan. Not necessarily. I don't see a condition that says. Doesn't that hang with the one? That requires me to. So. Which is like Bob's condition number five says this he needs to yeah. apply for it and receive a new free driveway permit. That's not in the in the findings from the last meeting. So I would have to be out of there. Well, I knew where we were at. <laughs> Silly you. Madam Chair, another point I click. So we're trying to help. We're trying to talk back here too to try to say, okay, how do we move forward uh, as well? I think what we wondered is we could use the attorney's draft alternative conditions because I think we've gone through those at pretty, you know, we've gone through all of those. And what I would potentially recommend is if you gave us a few minutes, so maybe if we took a 15 minute break yeah. or something, we could do a quick amended type up of those. And then come back and kind of walk through them all one last time collectively, so we would all be on the same page. Agreeable, everybody. Mm -hmm. Doing a motion. Yeah. Doing motion. Motion to take a right. 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 Is fifteen enough? I think so. Good. It may not even take that long. I think we've already done yeah. some other agenda items. Actually, are you sitting here? If you wanted to, you could move on and yeah, come yeah. back. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So putting your thumbs for fifteen minutes. I wouldn't mind that. Not 15 minutes. That's the I don't like that. Yeah, I know. I just said, yeah, and then I would just make these. I didn't know what I could just do, like, kind of change. So, how long do we got for that thing you brought up? That short one? How much time do we Sarah, want? Sarah? Ma'am, is that still recording? Yes. So if we work on another agenda item and we'll still get a little bit of there. Yeah, okay. so right. go ahead. All right. Well, I'll wait for Angela okay. to get back and Cindy to get back. But uh, yeah, so Virgil came and saw me after the meeting. So, so, okay, so I don't know anything about anything. Oh, yeah. This goes back to the Umberset variance that was at the Orinoco Township Board meeting that never came to APAC because variances don't. And so this is where the Umbersets had uh, just purchased a big property and was over south west side. Yeah, they wanted to break it up. Mark Larson, feedback. People had purchased it and they just wanted to parse out 4.62 acres. As a residential building line. And it, this is like if you go you know, to the oh, equestrian oh, center. Oh, keep back. Yes. Yes. It's an equestrian I know where we are. Um, I think if you go to the last page, that's your biggest aerial. You can actually see the horse barn on there. Yes. So right here is the first barn. Yep. In your corner. And it's up here. So and so you go down to the next gravel. Yep. Yep. You can actually see the property. Um, it's just the uh, little bit of Laura and Bill on the that okay. page. There's actually a red line where the, the variance was taken out. Okay. So, so the, there's the horse turn. There's Umber. Right. I see it. Okay. okay. So go back one page. So right here, they very they got variance for this floor for like six acres. So what are we talking about? Right. We're talking about the situation. It's a variance that the board of so the variance exists. Um, because the variance which is not what's in red here. That's a feedlot. Oh, that's where I'm. That's where the issue. Yeah. 
If you voted to, so when this was sorry. presented to us at the town board, the second, hang, on, hang, on, hang on, I want to each point it out, then I want everybody to hear. So this is the 4.6 acres that they got a variance for. It's, it's less than five acres, partially. So it's, you have to have five out of 35 to be a true non farm dwelling. So they had to do a variance for the 4.6 to get that a buildable site. Is that square? She just pointed out, is that so one point? Yep, that's the 4.6. It's not average. Where is this at? I thought they purchased. They did. They purchased a large acreage, yep. but they're parsing out 4.62 acres. So they build a lot. 535? No. They don't have to. Because the variance was for a less than five acre parcel so to become a built a site. We'll get to this. So, we're, uh -huh. so it's not a five acre uh -huh. site, so they're. Right. Well, but they got the variance to build on a, a 4.6, which I'm fine with. There's no issue with that. Right. So now if you go to the last page, so the red outlined area is the feedlot. The blue line is your quarter mile setback. So we, not we, so the town board, part of this variance was to allow a non-farm dwelling to be built within a quarter mile of a feedlot. Of a, a true, of an actual registered feedlot. Martin and I have had long conversations about this. So there are phantom feedlots in our township too, which they, they look back five years. They haven't had any livestock for the last five years, so then they become an inactive feedlot. This is an active feedlot. So Virgil Chilson owns the property of the feedlot, and he is rather obsessed about this non farm dwelling being allowed to be built within this quarter mile. And then, where exactly in this circle is that house going to be? The house is going to be up here where under is that? Uh, yeah. Major. So oh. this I'm assuming so, is the, but it has to be in yeah, like that blue but, So on this one, it was just so, a little so, dot. So, so Martin took and actually so threw the so, feedlot, the red line yeah, so, in there. So mm -hmm. part of where that the, makes the there, feedlot. So this is where they. So this is the actual feedlot that right here, beyond blue, which to so this yeah, quarter mile takes that whole parcel. But Adam, they're not within the parcel. They're not really going to build. They're not building in that circle. Hmm? So why is it a problem? So the actual building is going to be right here. This is on Versace. What was that would be? This is on Versace. So but the 4.6 is right here. But I thought this is sweet. This is under that here. Yep. So there's there's their two pole barn yep. and their house. The new house is going to use this driveway, and they've got the 4.62 acres like right here. Yeah, they're not in the circle because they're going to use the same driveway. I am right here. Right? That's kind of the thing is what. So this is we said you're going to use that same driveway to build. They think they're going to build up in here. All the wood side. So this is all parcels off right here. Mm -hmm. So this is the chunk they're trying to sell. This is the 4.6. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they're going to use the driveway and come oh, I'm sorry. Here. That's this. So this is yeah. Frank Leeds' property. So they're, yeah. the one they just parked off and squares off with this. Okay. It comes straight here. If you look back one page, like, yeah. So I think if what you're saying is here's the quarter mile boundary of the yeah. feedlot, yeah. and they're encroaching this, on part of it. Well, it's encroaching on part of But when Martin actually drew the feedlot out, which he did here, so he drew out the feedlot of where the livestock are fed, the buildings. Then all of a sudden, your quarter mile is way out here, which is touching the spring lease of property. So. So I wonder where this yeah. line was at the center of the feedlot, and he's going from the boundary. Yeah, so feedlot. this is like what our maps are. So it's just a dot, roughly where I see where the feedlot is. If you go from the actual boundaries, boundaries, so you have to go from the corners. You know, so if you have a building, say you've got eight buildings, the closest building to the oh. next neighboring okay. property is where you have. And to go. why is he upset? Uh, because he doesn't want a 
Don Barn dwelling house built within a quarter mile. That's going to complain about the smell. Exactly. That's what his concern is. And so how we addressed it at the town board meeting was, if you get a complaint from those people, they knowingly built a house within a quarter mile of a feed lot. And if they have any problems with it, they're going to contact their township the board chair. Oh, yeah. And we're going to help them understand. Well, we have it. their zoning ordinance. We have it in the zoning ordinance. Yeah. What? Then you Court. can't so, it within a quarter mile. You know, we can't build a feed lot within a quarter of a mile. So was, when the county did this, did they measure it up? Or I don't well, know. I think, Ask the county. I think it was this. I, you know. <laughs> Because they just had a dot. They, they just the dot. They just had a the dot. They just had a 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 dot. So then, what, what would you do if you're Mr. Tilson? Or, I mean, what would you do? I mean, well, we, the petition to probably, we did it based on staff I can. That. Well, and I get really. Kind of protective of feedlots. Right. Um, I get that. So the, my and thing, that's why the residential protective of their art. Yeah. You know, um, I get that. We, if we allow this one. We're setting it again. But, yeah. but does yeah. that information be I mean, resolved? So if the staff findings say it, I'm going to do it. So the information we the town for it, this is like the very yeah. best we can. That's going right back into what we just so, talked about. So, like, this is in my in, with this, because Martin just gave us today. So Martin, um, Angela White, and I were as we look for today. And then, frankly, see if they are. The real I can see her today. So, it was something that, you know, we have that quarter mile step back in our. Portable. But this is really good information because now I understand because this whole quarter mile. Was drawn like it was barely, barely well, here. here. You could have built your house outside yeah. the quarter mile. Yeah. yeah, and that's what the plan there is. Yeah. Now we should have put right now. I get now I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, well, so a variance is it? Yeah, so no, a variance. Oh, they were allowed to be another five fathers on the court. Well, it's a and they're wrong. Six to be. According to the I don't know. No, the other thing Virgil brought up at the top where the media is that that's a state. Law that's just not a county ordinance, it's a state law that you cannot build mm -hmm. within a quarter mile. Yeah. That's just not something we do here in Homestead no. County or in Oakwood Township. He said that is state mandate, is that correct? Which I did not know. Oh, it might be, but just for the state, we have it. If it's located in your ordinance, you still have the ability to verify. Yeah, we'd have to verify that that was. I, just, I didn't know. So, in talk with him today, that I was bringing up. I said, I don't know the next steps. That's their recourse. Yeah. I don't know. That would be the recourse, that would be the recourse at this point would be uh, filing a suit in district court. Because yeah. the, the, so the, the appeal process, the time to appeal the variance is expired. So then you'd have to go to that. No. So. It's, I think Virgil is you know, and ready to do that. Well, it's a good lesson learned from this too, I guess. That next time I get a map and st I mean yeah. staff meetings, I have to go. Okay. Right. Well, it, it's, it's, I, mean, I have to personally learn this because you know, I'm like that dad. Like it, well, this chunk. I talked with Brian Call today too. Yeah. So Brian and I are the two largest people in the county. And I said, okay, if this goes through, I said, are they going to say, well, we can, you know, somebody wants? I've got news. Can I move my house down to camp right outside yours? <laughs> <laughs> And I'll make sure the fans are all going right towards you. As long right. as I don't get a second. Are you getting right. if you so, can yeah. so, well, I think, oh, I think it may be a question about and say, so how do we, yeah, I, and it sounds like probably he's going to have to. It, so then that's what I told Virgil today. I said, it's already approved. I said, I don't know what happened with that because, but I said, I, you know, he was very thankful that we came out and met with him today because, like, well, they, and that map he included in here is very beneficial. Yeah. I, you can't necessarily go from the center of the feed lot well, from the boundary. Yeah. And it's always supposed to be the closest building to the property line or to the city adjacent property. He, <laughs> Map that I'll say. And so the first several pages are just pictures of his aerial site over the last 
for five years. Did he not get notified that this was? So the, he, he was notified, but the way they explained it, he got a letter instead of a postcard, and he didn't read the letter. He said that he they were always used to a postcard. He didn't turn it over to look at the map. Okay. So I'm, I'm like, well, so he got the note. So it, that's it, part of the challenge. The people received the notification yeah. they needed. And he did, he did verify oh. that he did get the notifications. I'm like, if you would have went to that meeting and voiced your opinions that night, because you know, he knew measurements the first time I talked to him, he knew exactly how far it was from his property to the next property and his property and to the I, township. It would have made a difference because she, as soon as you pointed it out, she picked up on Yeah. And I'm sure the other board members would have as well. Yeah. Okay. So are notices coming as letters now or post, or does it depend? Um, it's a notice on the front and then a map on the back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> stamp as a postcard. No, I guess it's not a postal card. It's like a so, so it's a so feedlot technician. He looked at it and so there was three feedlots in that area. Yeah. Okay, let's let her. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are hard on roll what we discussed. I would recommend so what we have here is Allie has on the board been able to kind of put down what we think was agreed to. And so I don't know, Allie, if you want to just kind of go see like number one, is there any questions? Let's we'll go one by let's go on quickly. So you can see where we replace all cold. For personal, yeah. you can see the 10,680 square feet. You can also see where you mentioned that you wanted to strike something. Um, you yeah. stricken it, so this is number one. Um, Does that 10,000 number need to be used up by not exceeding 10,600 again? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to do it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, Okay, so then strike through that one sentence. Number two had cold, so we removed it. Strike number four, the first two sentences. Then a period after applicants shall at all times comply with the approved site plan and grading plan. And we removed, which is incorporated here in by reference. Um, applicant shall instead of may. Striking six and seven. Uh, number 10, replacing cold with personal. Number 13, again, replacement. Okay, and two spots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. yep. I'm just following along with yep. the notes. <laughs> uh, so I have now renumbered them. <laughs> we don't have to do 14 2. 14 8. 14 8. Oh, Hold on. Okay. So, one minute, someone on 16, though. So, so I just, um, yep. there shall be no outdoor storage as its own. So I just. That's the first number 14. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's how I'll do this. Sorry. Okay, it, it's just close. It's just right next to each other. I can fix that later. Fourteen, no explosives. Fifteen, no outdoor sales. Sixteen is the old uh, signage. Signage. The signage. Seventeen is the new old, old is the new fourteen. Um, and we wanted to strike. 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 And then the nose buttons too. Noise vibrations and pervious surface coverage. 2021 replacing cold with personal. 24 
Replacing the first sentence, leaving the remainder remaining, the property operation shall be available for inspection by authorized township inspector when within normal business hours. And then 25 and 26. No change, guys. Well, thank you for doing that. I think I followed along and managed my Now we have something that can be motions. This is the alternative draft conditions, the updated alternative draft conditions. Yeah. Correct? It's like not final. Final? I'm just saying updated. It's now updated. Yeah. Updated. Yeah. Okay, now that we know what we changed. Any discussion? Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Any changes, comments, motions? I make a motion that we approve. Oh, just give me a second. Here. So I will make a motion that we approve. The conditional use amendment OR 2023-001 CP by TNM based on staff findings with updated draft alternative findings. Conditions. Condition. Not findings. I'm sorry. Second. Okay. Everybody know where we're at? Understand what the motion is? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Rucker and a second by Mr. Albrecht to approve CUP um, based on staff findings and said updated conditions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. I know it's been a lot of work. Is it going to Christmas miracle? We can have a month off. Do we have Do we have anything on our agenda for next nice month yet? We can work out anything. Yes, we, we, we need to work on our and maybe make it. Okay, so um, close to Christmas. All right, so we have a. Um, um, I had Sarah at a zoning ordinance such a. Yep. She has a discussion item. Um, we had previously talked a little bit about this, and if you look at the back of your packet, um, I had her include, I believe the first copy is our zoning ordinance, and the second, this is Article 3. Based on your guys' feedback, remember that action item I gave you? Yes. And based on the feedback I got, it looked to me like Article 3 was a pretty common place that everybody wanted to stuff. Oh. And so I asked Sarah to include the current version from our zoning up ordinance, which I believe is the first. Whichever has the blue yeah. kind of headings, yeah. that is Olmstead County's. That's Olmstead County. Yep. And then the other one is in all black is the is the township. So that way you have a side by side comparison. Um and see what's made and maybe they're I I don't think they're exactly identical. Well, we'll I recall when I when I glance through it. But, but that's that's what I'd like to do for the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Is to do a side by side comparison, see what's in the county that maybe we need to add or vice versa. Um we'll need to change. Okay. The other thing I wanted to so that's kind of your whole website. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is um, um, Tammy and I had had a meeting, a meet and greet with Allison Sosa, and um, and we discussed um, doing an education session. Now, as I might, I don't know if you were sure, but I I don't remember a number. Quite a few years ago, we had kind of a land use plan in 101 
part of the planning department. You see, Gosselin went through. I remember that meeting with the veiled light. And yeah. Like that. And, um, but that was a, quite a while ago. Yep. And most of you guys are new since then. And the town board is all new yep. since then. And so Allison brought up about having an education session um, to just kind of discuss some of the things that happened. I meant to thank the applicant because we got education, you know, baptism by fire with this application, and we learned a lot. Learned mistakes that were made on both sides, and I think it gave us a better clarity at things we need to look at, conditions we may or may not need to write for future CMPs going forward. Now we have the moratorium, so we got 11 months left to. We were still at 11. I figured we were about to eight. Um, well, and I think there was going to be an updated. Yeah, there was going to be an I think updated. Bob was going to work. Was he going to work with you, David, on an updated moratorium? I don't. Um, well, I'll follow up with him on that. Yeah. And, and then yeah, the. September meeting, Bob called in for it. Yep. Yeah. And he also talked about an education section mm -hmm. session. Um, and so I talked to him as well. And so what I'd like to do is work with with Bob and planning and schedule something that works and, and Bob will come down for that. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we may have to, to work with everybody's schedules. We may have to call a special meeting. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was just looking. I won't be here on the 22nd of January. Okay. Um, because, and the reason I say that is Bob has a, a city council meeting on the first and third Mondays of the month. And so the, our normal meeting time is when we meet top up for him. Um, you said the 22nd? Yeah. Martin Luther King Day is the week before. Oh, that's our fourth one day. Yeah, meeting. Um, so anyway, um, that's what I'd like to get done after the first year. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add something. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> so yeah, part of the conversation, you know, the, that we had. So I'm coming from the city of Rochester, where I worked with their planning um, and zoning commission, their city council, um, and their zoning board of appeals. And we would do an annual training that and we would do it with the city attorney at the time. And it was really um, like, I don't say one on one, but like, what do you want to hear? Like, right? What what do you what do you want to know? What questions do you have as commissioner? So um, I would really value any questions that you have. If you wanted to send them my way, we could really craft the training to whatever questions, you know, whatever questions you have. And the other thing that we did um, that was kind of fun was sometimes your staff reports are kind of long. Sometimes the year agendas are kind of long. So how do you have they summarize those, right? What's the important stuff to read? Um, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I thought right, it's all important. I was going <laughs> to say it's all important. But there's different pieces to write staff reports, right? And what's the important piece for the, you know, for for the commissioners, right? And it comes down to the criteria, the findings, and and the conditions. That that's what you want to know. That's how you determine what's relevant and what's and what's not relevant. And well, and we had a lot of success with that was tonight because we did not need to sit and listen to all the lead up yes. to the findings and conditions. We've heard it multiple times. So I was glad that you didn't go through all of that again. Well, thank you. And it helped put together most most of most of that uh, report. Yep. But we just we saw a lot of um, a lot of value that came out of that at the at the city. And it was an annual training at the beginning of the year. And you know, what what do you want from us? How do we support you as commissioner? So I can see the same value you know happening with, with this this commission. And Allison, one thing I'd add is I think we learn lessons in our processes too. So we'll be working on that through this process. Yeah. So that'll be something I'm learning I, too. I think we we learn and I, what we can do better, and that what we have to like. Yeah. And in, and um, I think I guess speaking for myself, but I'm guessing most of you as well. What this whole application was frustrating because things were done prior to getting approval. It wasn't necessarily what he did. It was the fact that he did it without approval. Yeah. And so that was kind of the enforcement thing that we had talked about a little bit earlier. So that's a 
question or something that I would like to see covered in an education session is what what do you guys do and what is what is and then Bob can follow it up with what he does as far as that whole process that kind of stuff so um so anyway but I thought you know with the holidays and all of that everybody's schedules are busy trying to squeeze in a special meeting is not going to work and I so what I told Bob is that's like a January so February so it's a lot because we're working on updating our land use plan and our zoning ordinance I think it's pretty relevant that we do it sooner rather than later. yeah so that that's my thought on that um and I think it's okay you guys can tell me otherwise but if we work on say article three and we want to make some changes or we said hey, you know, we've got this we need to make sure it's in ours whatever i think we can take that once we get it finalized and go ahead and send it to the town board for approval and then we can move on to the next one we don't necessarily have to do the whole document um, like this whole section d thing we could take that and say look county has this section we want to take those, put them in ours, and send it to the board to a perfect go. And then for the next time something comes up, it's there. It's there, right? Yeah. Right. So it's it's those kinds of things um, because we've tried, been trying to do the land use planning for you know since COVID, right? Yeah. And and I kind of changed how I'm thinking about it rather than um, trying to do the whole document. Let's Take a section, and as we do that, get it approved. Yeah. Now, that now it's going to it's it's not as overwhelming for us, and it it will be easier, I think, for the town board. We can okay. take this piece, show them what we're proposing to change, versus giving them this giant document. To, right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way I decided to approach it. I love that idea. I just the only question I have about it is like, how do we get citizen feedback? If we're doing it piecemeal, so like that. When well, you talk to the county about the citizen feedback yeah. piece. What Rochester Township and I can't remember the other township. What they said is, we didn't really solicit resident feedback, but what we did was, when we finished the land use plan, we had an open house, okay. and we allowed the residents to come in, ask us questions. We kind of talked to them a little bit about what was changed what was updated you know rush township said we're pretty much like you we we duplicate everything the county does with a couple weird little nuances but they said we didn't really solicit feedback because it just gets crazy but he said what we did was open houses for that um that public education piece is where that approached it rochester township and um not New is that a, is that a feasible i think it was cascade and rochester both did that so because otherwise we do what we have a public hearing here or just at the town board i'm sorry but i missed your question so at the rochester township and cascade township when they were done reviewing their land use plan instead of you know offering like resident feedback on what you think the land use plan should look like the townships both went ahead and they made their land use plan changes mm -hmm. and then they offered an opportunity for like education so they did open houses and that way they felt like they were giving the residents an opportunity to learn about what the land use plan is and they could you know it was more like not asking for feedback it was more like educating people and so the question was how do, how do we do that do we have to have a public hearing um you know, I think Rochester and Cascade Township just literally had like an open house a couple hours. Whoever could make it made it. And that's your land use plan, not not your zoning ordinance, but your but your land use plan. The land, the land use plan. You know, Rochester did something kind of interesting with parks and transportation. I'm just wondering, like, okay, maybe it's not like here's the document, review it, but maybe ahead of all of that, it's like way in like you know they have like these online things where people yeah. can like, put their ideas i just kind of want a sense of like 
do people want more development? Do people want farmland preservation? Like, what, what do people? Well, I can tell you what the people in Romania could want. Well, I think I know. Very openly, if they want ag preservation, number one. Oh, I mean, and they need to have that residential development. Well, the, in, in, I understand why a registered can't do that. Because if you ask for feedback at oh, the time, you can't. You're going to have, if you yeah, have a thousand more. people in and the then country, you're going to be a thousand different answers, answers, and you're going to have 999 yeah. people that aren't happy because theirs didn't make it. I'm not saying the feedback, but like ideas. Like, yeah. you know, like affordable housing is important to us. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they might just identify things that we. Yeah, I think the conversation. Because are we representative of our, like, right. of everyone here? Like, Maybe we are. I don't know. I mean, that's actually a the conversation actually came out at a graduation party, and they asked me how in the world we allow these two developments on 18th Avenue, and you're taking all our ag land away, and all these things. And once I explained to them that, you know, we're trying to be very thoughtful in our township about the residential corridor along 18th Avenue. We're trying to keep the residential area here, and then if you don't know, by the way, this will probably be the next to the city of Rochester in the next 20 years. And then I said, we're really thoughtfully looking at how do we save the ag land we have, you know, but at the same time, if you have a farmer that has nobody to take over his farm, and he has an opportunity to sell it for seven times more than it's worth, how do you tell him he can't do that, right? So it's once you start, I, I like the idea of having some because once we started that dialogue, everybody in that room went, oh, you know, because I walked in the room and they were just kind of like, how oh, did you allow this and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. once I explained to them our approach and uh, the thought behind some of the decisions we're making, you know, you know, so I, I do think it's important to have those open houses yeah. and maybe solicit some I think, ideas. I think, yeah. One thing we did update the countywide land use plan was updated and approved last year. So I think one thing we could do is kind of start with looking at what that kind of updated land use plan says, kind of having that conversation and then looking at the zoning ordinance, which has not been updated. I think there's a couple of questions that we're kicking tires on, frankly, here right now, as far as I think even starting to have conversations like, is it time for us to revisit the zoning code? You know, just in general, which would be, you know, maybe instead of having at the county level and then maybe having, you know, we talk about that maybe instead of having a separate one, maybe we can adapt the needs of Orinoco Township into the county one. Yeah. Now, these are long conversations. Now, they will take time. I think these are just things that as we're starting to visit with different townships and small cities and just kind of doing meet and greets and stuff, things we're starting to hear percolate. So these are kind of things that are popping up potentially for us too. I think it'll be some good conversations to try to figure out kind of what does all of this mean and how can we get it where the pieces are kind of, I'd say rowing in the same direction, but I guess that well, that'd probably be the analogy, yeah, kind of moving in this in the same way. And I think we're extraordinarily interested in being a part of that, you know, whatever that might look like. Absolutely. Thank you. So, and I, I think your idea that you were talking about with the open house is, is okay for, and, and maybe a good thing for the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was but just. The zoning ordinance, I, I think we need to, you know, based on applications we've had over the past five years, you know, each one is whether it's a housing development there or a questioning center there or a, House, house thing on the way, whatever. I mean, we've had enough issues that we need to get something in place pretty quick. And so that's, I think, in our zoning, we need to look at a few of those things. Well, if somebody wants to approach me about a mini house development, too, mini house development, it's already in existence, but she mm -hmm. wants to add to oh. it. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Maybe we don't have anything really because we, you know, and we, because when we look at a residential lot, we're looking at two acres in size and count. So, I mean, I think without, without having that, it gets, it's not impossible, but it's complicated. So that's not there. There's no, that's the problem. There is no, it exists today. It's there. And she's already doing it. Yep. She has three of them at least. Where, where's enforcement? Did anyone complain? I don't know if there's been a complaint. 
mean, I, I, I don't. It was when Charlie Lacey was still on the floor. Yeah. It's been a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should remember that list you guys had me draw up, looking back at all of the minutes from every meet. Like, maybe we can have that alongside what we're doing too, so we don't forget, like, yes. that so we had a up. Yeah interest or, or curious about certain things so um can you man i think i still have them somewhere can you, can you send them to sarah so she can forward them okay, yeah. i so got one them. folder all my planning stuff to move into that's a separate stack. This was just for this. Yeah, that I just have a file this quick at home. So, <laughs> yeah, no, so. Um, so that's kind of um, mm -hmm. kind of what I wanted to talk about as far as the LUP and, yep. and zoning ordinance. Um, but like I said, based on everybody's feedback in September, yep. um, and I think Article Three is where we'll start, and I think it is stem because we don't understand exactly what process is when there's a complaint right. or um, things like that. So, um, so our homework yeah. is due in December. Are we yeah. Our homework for that's due in December at our December meeting? For our meeting in January. Never on the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get out of this. You, you guys tell me, are you okay with having a December meeting? Be the 18th, the week before Christmas. I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. Totally, so, well, I'm fine too. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the December meeting will start going through our Perfect. Um, and then, like I said, in the meantime, I'll work with Allison and, and Bob and we'll get some kind of education thing. But uh, for um, well, maybe in February, that'll give them both time to get their together sounds great a little easy on us what's that you go easy on us in december that's all we'll... yeah she didn't get keep us here till 11. no <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do this again tomorrow night right. i guess the old thing tell me how i'm really tired let me go back to this what's that oh okay. so i was just saying like um, so that there are three other variances that are help show that i followed that allowed a feedlot or a house to be built within a quarter mile of a feedlot. Two of them are uh, kids of the feedlot owner. Yeah. The other one's a sister. Um, yeah. And the other one's a what? A sister. Oh, so it's all family. It's all family. Well, they're not going to complain about things. Well, and, and that's what I, I did ask Martin, or maybe it was Allie, I asked. She's the one that supplied me with all this lovely information. Um, so after I researched that, it was three relatives that those brains were allowed for. Oh. Sister being Carol. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Other blades. So. Over the same area. You didn't. You were voted against. Do you remember this one? It but was. It went to Ben variance because those that was the town show. Town board. Variance has come to the town board. Like this one came to the town board. Did you what, what, Do you remember that one? I voted against it. What's that? Because it was near a feedlot, but I didn't. Was it within a? Probably wasn't within a quarter mile because if it would have been, I would have done door deeper. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, but that is one thing I thought about with doing our land use plan and our zoning ordinance. Do we need? Should we look into a half mile setback from a, a subdivision from the feedlot? Is that something we can get maps on? You know, draw a half mile. Okay, so not not just any feedlot, active feedlots. So you could put a single dwelling. In the quarter, but not, well, so not, not, you know, what's going to end up happening over there. Well, right, because they're already planning. Exactly. And if you told that to Virgil, too, I said, I'm sorry, but yeah. Orinoco wants, Orinoco City, yeah. that township wants to go you up and develop yeah. you all, all yeah. the way to New Haven. Yeah. You know, and I, it's not just Virgil, but I'm trying to protect all of our animal feedlots that are in this township. Well, just because the city of Orinoco wants to do something doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. So, well, and so and at, it's, that's like 50, 50 years from now. Yeah, yeah. but that's like he's going to end up with unpersats want to put in four houses on that 20 acres and the city's like, well, you know, eventually you'll be in the city and we don't want just four houses. We want maximum. We want high density. We want well, that's not their problem. No. 
and so they're probably not studying a study on 20 house next to a feedlot. Yeah. So that's that's well, big. actually, well, I guess that's on our side. We, a feedlot can't be built within the half mile of a municipality, is in our ordinance. Yeah, but if how are they going to do that? They can't really annex it in, in the city than if the feedlot's existing. The, that's not saying that the city can't build within a half mile of the feedlot. That's saying that in the township we can't. So in the city, they might say, we don't have to follow those rules. We can do whatever we want. And then those people will complain and complain that they live next to a farm. Yeah. Even though the farm's been there for 100 years. Well, that's, I'm just trying to, I'm mining. I'm trying to protect the homeowner that buys the property. Yeah. As yeah. much as I am, you know, we don't need right. complaints on either side. Right. Tell me about it. So now, but he has done, to go yeah. back. It's a done deal. So he has to go to court. To... Now he's got to go to court. Yeah. At his own expense. But we're, and I, I want to go back to the staff findings. The staff findings told you that this was right. So do we need clarification on how to do measurements at the staff level? I think that if you have a question, you know, I think there, if you have a specific question on it, yeah. kind of, you can ask. I don't want to get into, I don't know that we are ready to get into the what actually step by step happened. I mean, the staff report was done, the due diligence was done, you know, all of How, the, I, you know, I mean, we we do referral comments. Those were completed. There were no issues brought up in those referral comments were there. So how? And then we do a public hearing. So how does she get educated on whether it was at the line to the half line? How do you know? I mean, she's gone. So they're getting guidance. How do you, what do you do at this point? Because you went down the wrong road, right? And when we gave the variance, so we did it wrong. I would disagree with that. Okay, so we so, I mean, I think that you, the town, the town board, the, yeah, the town board made findings of fact based on what was presented to them, mm -hmm. and they made findings that this was something that was applicable. So there was nothing wrong done. It was, if but they don't used agree, the wrong you, measurement. Isn't that my understanding? Is that what you said earlier? Well, so okay, they just, just use a, a map dot. Okay, we missed out the conversation. So here's something. When so it should be the outer line. Yes. This so that's my question. How do you not do it again? If we have an addition, how do you, how do you know so we don't do it again? Because in the feedlot technician was, you know, so the feedlot te technician put that in that packet. Yeah. Large. And then we also had a, he's my age, uh, Jim Standard. Oh, yeah. so well, I think that we won't work with our feedlot technician on that because that's where we no, get that right. information. Yeah. So that information comes to us as part of the referral comment. Okay. So we'll look into that, but I mean, as far as kind of, you know, how this was laid out and moved forward, I mean, the other part is, we did make sure that notifications were sent. So people were notified. They had an opportunity to come to the public hearing. The staff report had all of the information that was pertinent in there. And so the town board had all the information they needed to make findings. And so it's not whether, you know, and, and, and sometimes people will disagree with those. And that just unfortunately kind of happens. And in most cases, my guess is that difference between the dot and the end of the feedlot yep. isn't going to no, go right through the middle of a property. And that's what this it is. It's just that's why this parcel is so narrow. Yeah, it's very it's, narrow. It's what 200 feet wide. And so yeah. if you move it to the outside of the, it encompasses the whole. So is it defined somewhere? I mean, when you said that I need to learn more, so where do you learn? What we were talking about earlier. Well, how did she, well this, how we, so this, I mean, we can get try to get some general answers because it is not in. This would not be a zoning. A lot of this starts to get outside of zoning. Yeah. You get into more of some of the feedlot type yeah. things. And so that's where when we get any application, what we do is we send that to uh, how many referral agencies do we have now? There's like 20 some. Yeah. And so basically we blast that sucker out and then everybody provides us with comments and feedback. And then what our job is, is to kind of summarize yeah. that in our reports and then kind of come forward. And you, you see that because there will be letters attached to yeah. the UPs. Yep. From you know, and pollution control agencies. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was trying to just get an answer to your question. Oh, when you yeah. asked earlier, how do so I know that? Well, and one thing I, I've done now is I've signed up to get all the 
notifications for our township. So that way, because I want to be more informed right. as to what's going on. So when something like this does come up, I can well, look P into P it. Were you at this one? You said, why did this come through iPad? Why didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The why variance. Because of the back. Yeah. So anyway, anything else that you want to? So just Virgil has to do and be the one that has to file. To get it removed. I just don't want to follow up with him tomorrow. Yeah, thanks for the uh, If I tell him, it was it was a lesson learned. Yep. Because there was just well, it but I down basically. He didn't have the perimeter. You know, he used enough um, where to die. I need where to be well, careful of what I say. Yes, he's not going to care. No, the learning curve. No, I would. I mean, uh, we can get the technical explanation if, you, and we will. But I wouldn't say that there was any errors made because no. I'm pretty sure that there were not. Right. But it's if you have to have a point on a map in which you take it and they yep. do that based on what is defined. So yep. it might have been the difference in this case of the point is the point in the middle. And if you take the point and you go at the end, that difference can be That's part the of the bus. Yeah. And so, so the regulations you might say you point it, but I think just to kind of look in and we'll we will get that for you. But I think and for uh, it, it normally, it, the, the lot sizes are large enough to where they could buy a five acre lot and they've got three and a half acres they can build a house on. They've only got one one point five that they can. not So normally it's not an issue. This one just happens to be so very easy. at this point to appeal it, you need to go to district court. I mean, that's really the information. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where that's you're that, at. That's it. That and way process, you this, this is what I learned. You know, you we need had, to take it to court. Had discussion. So is the, internally, is the, this is another thing. Yeah. To, Angela's list is to send it to your next. Would you want me to read? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would like to talk about that half mile setback on a subdivision. But I just feel like if we're going to put a lot of houses, as long as it's an active fee lot, inactive and phantom fee lots, I, I understand that they're, just, they're not in existence. And it's got to be, in our township, it's got to be over 30 ML to be considered a fee lot. Over 30. Uh, under 30 ML units. You don't have to get a registration. You can just have them. That is something that I I didn't realize. And I think thirty was a magic number. I didn't remember being thirty, but we did that so that if somebody has six horses, they don't violate some people. Yeah. Oh, so Adam, just just. The concern here from Virgil is that they will complain. Like, what is what is the um? Virgil is an older gentleman, very set in his ways. And he just doesn't want the house there, but then he's also concerned about his speed lot. He feels like the landowner next to him has more rights than he does now because he's we've allowed this house to be built with inside that quarter mile seven. What, what rights is he worried that they have? That well, why do you have a rule? There's a rule. Oh, no, I'm, sure that, that, I'm thinking the older gentleman thinks there's a rule, yeah. and now it's a rule. Yeah. Oh, and no, he, which is he, what we thought, he, and, and that's what I we think, thought earlier. But I understand. I think he's. I guess they probably what why the rule was put in place. I guess I'm just asking, like, what is the protective? Why is that rule there? Why is that smell? Smell. It's the principle of dust. Yeah. Okay. So with livestock, you have right. get out. all of it. So yeah. it's it's basically a two way protection because it the is. people next to it don't yep. want to be dealing with dust. Yeah, but we don't want to worry about. Uh, I don't want. Other people to have to spell it. Right. You know, but then this the farmer wants to be able to do what he, what he or wants. she has yeah. been doing for a long time without yeah, worry. The wind's just right. I can smell it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a sure kind of guy. The concerns he had, of course, were that the new people were going to build this house. Yep. They were going to complain to the point where he would lose his land, he'll, you know, lose yep. everything because. We've allowed a non farm parcel on that 4.62 acres. Is that a realistic worry? Is, no. I no. said if, no. if they complain, he does. But he said some things today that will get complaints. I'm like, Virgil, you can't do that. Oh, boy. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to end up being outside of our room. Yes. Yeah. Good well, luck, Tom Murray. <laughs> well, it's kind of like a great example of. Residents be concerned about something. We had a garage built that was 15 feet or so closer to the setback, that, or farther away from the setback, whatever that was supposed to be, right? 15 feet was the, and we were going to approve this permit 
and the neighbors were really concerned about like what if our tree falls on his garage now, now because he's 15 feet closer to that setback what's that mean and we said call your insurance company call homeowners like that's there's only so much the town board and planning is only can do right yeah, <laughs> so it's like, right we hear their concerns but there's only so much we can cover. Well, and it's hard to like operate according to what ifs. <laughs> you know, like oh, and surprising and when it falls on your house, your insurance covers it. Not the person's tree that fell unless they neglected it and it was dead. If it was a lime tree, then it's not going to get your insurance. Just so you know. No, and I'm finding out all. I, just paying attention to it. Very <laughs> <laughs> observant. Yes. Has there been the motion to adjourn? Yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. Are you ready to leave? Well, I was making sure. You know, oh, there's all you know, one I move we adjourn the meeting. It's like it's a meeting night. Who was the it's second? Yeah. I don't have a second yet. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Rutger and a second by Ms. Collins to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Really? You get to go in later. <laughs> no.